United States Steel, USS, the industrial family that serves the nation, presents the Theater Guild on the Air. Our stars, Judith Anderson and Helen Menken. The play, The Old Maid, by Zoe Akins, from the novel by Edith Wharton. Produced on the air tonight by the Theater Guild, one of America's foremost theatrical producers. Every day, everywhere, you are served by products of steel. In your home, in your business, in your travel. The trademark of United States Steel, USS, on any steel product is your guide to quality steel. And now, direct from the stage of the Vanderbilt Theater in New York, the United States Steel Corporation brings you... The Old Maid by Zoe Akins. And here is Roger Pryor speaking for the Theater Guild. Good evening, everyone. When the curtain had rung down on the first Broadway performance of The Old Maid, Stark Young, the drama critic, wrote, Nowhere in this town is there so fine an example of two players in combination. Judith Anderson and Helen Menken share, to an extent that is rare, the playing of two great parts that are equally weighed. Tonight, the Theatre Guild presents Judith Anderson and Helen Menken in their original roles, supported by Estelle Winwood, Patricia Kirkland, Taylor Holmes, and Wesley Addy in Zoe Aiken's Pulitzer Prize-winning drama, The Old Maid. Year is 1831. Andrew Jackson is president, and there are 24 states in the Union. It's the era of tall felt hats, narrow trousers, elaborate, tight waisted gowns, and many petticoats. In a mansion on Bleecker Street in New York City, two young women are seated before a coal fire talking. How do I look, Cousin Chatty? Oh, dear, you're, you're lovely. Lovely enough for any man to propose to. <laughs> Good. Only Clem isn't any man, dear. He's a very particular one. Oh, very particular. Shall I say yes to him, Cousin Chatty? Well, you say just what you please, Cousin Delia. And now I think I'd better go, dear. Chatty, dear, uh-huh. if you run upstairs, you'll find two of my dresses on the bed. The emerald with the black lace and the blue merino. Oh, I thank you, Delia. And I'll take them. But I'm afraid I'll always be plain. No matter how generous you are. If you take that attitude, my dear, you can't help but become an old maid. Well, I shall be an old maid. Because the man I love doesn't love me. Goodness, oh, oh. that must be Clem. Oh, yeah, it's Clem. May I come in? I'll go out the other door. No, dear, Clem won't bite you. Chatty, no, wait. No, 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 goodbye, Delia. And if I were you, I'd say yes when he asked me. <laughs> Clem, my dear, I do love you. If only... If only what? Only you didn't have to go away. Why must you? Because I want to learn to paint. In Paris and Rome, darling, there are people who can teach me. But Clem, dear... I owe myself that, dear. Just just one year to find out if I'm any good. Of course you're good, darling. Everybody says so. Will you wait until then? (laughs) I'll wait, dearest. But it will be so lonely. Oh, don't spend so much time by yourself. Get out a little. Let your cousin Chatty help you pick out your trousseau, and before you know it, I'll be back, and you'll be Mrs. Clem Spender. Oh, darling, I wish it were tomorrow. No, tonight. It's agreed, then, Delia? You will wait until I come back. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Kiss me, darling. Oh, darling. I love you. I love you. And there'll never be anybody else. Never. Two years later, 1833. Upstairs in her bedroom, Delia adjusts her wedding veil and gazes into the mirror. There's a knock at the door. Delia, are you almost ready? Cousin Chatty, come in. They've gone downstairs. Your father and Jim and Dr. Lansko. And Aunt Carrie's here. 
She came all the way from Italy just for your wedding. Chatty, darling, quick. I need something blue. Ooh. And I have it right here in this little box. I was instructed to bring it up to you. Were you by whom? Clem. Clem Spender. Clem. Is he... I thought he was in Italy. No, he's here, Delia. He arrived today. Today? Why, it's a turquoise. A turquoise pendant. Something blue. That's what he said. Oh, it's lovely. Did he tell you why he came back, Chatty? Well, he didn't know that you were going to be married, Delia. He thought you must be ill because you stopped writing. And he came home to find out. That's the Mozart... The wedding march is next. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chatty, I'm afraid. Oh, of what, Delia, dear? Of Clem, of what he may say or do. There'll be champagne, and he, if he should take a glass too much... Oh, watch him, Chatty, will you? Be, be kind to him. I mustn't cry. No, you won't. Just keep saying to yourself, I'm marrying a Ralston. I'm marrying into the wealthy Ralston family. Yes, I am marrying a Ralston, and I'm glad. Now, Delia... When Clem went to Italy two years ago to study painting, you promised to wait for him, didn't you? I did wait, Chatty. I was patient, but... Yes, he but promised what? to come back in a year. Well, didn't it ever occur to you that an artist couldn't possibly know whether he was a success or a failure at the end of a year? I waited two, two long years. It seemed so hopeless. I couldn't bear to be an old maid, Chatty. Well, I shall be an old maid... Because the man I love doesn't love me. Not for any other reason. You told me that once before. Two years ago. Oh, listen, it's the wedding march. You've got to go down now. I'm ready. Remember, Chatty. Watch Clem. Don't take your eyes off him for one instant. Oh, no, I won't, Delia. I can promise you that. Are you coming, Delia? Yes. I'm coming, Chatty. Six years went by. Delia Lovell, now Mrs. James Ralston, lives in a mansion on Gramercy Park. And Chatty? Well, Cousin Chatty, defying convention, has opened a nursery home for underprivileged children. It's there that her Aunt Carrie finds her late one afternoon. Come here, Chatty. Let me look at you. Well, I always said you'd never be an old maid, even though you were plain. <laughs> I know you did, Aunt Carrie. How old are you? Don't tell me. Twenty-seven, isn't uh -huh. it? And engaged to be married at last. How on earth did you and Joe Rolston ever happen to take a fancy to each other after all these years? Well, Joe and I have seen a lot of each other since Delia married his brother. Would you like a cup of tea? No, thank you. Are you here alone? Yes, but Joe, Mr. Ralston, is coming later. And, uh, well, Dr. Lansko usually stops by about this time. Tell me, my child, what on earth ever possessed you to open this nursing home? What pleasure can you possibly find in taking care of unfortunate children? Well, Aunt Carrie, five years ago, while you were abroad, I was very ill... <laughs> they called it lung fever. Yes, dear. And, uh, we all expected you to go like your poor father. Well, I went down to Virginia, where I recovered. And when I came home, I, I was lonely. And that's why, for four years now, I've taken care of these poor children. And, oh, Aunt Carrie, you can't know, no one can know, what they've come to mean to me. How much I love them, and how much they need me. No doubt your efforts are meritorious, dear. Aunt um, Carrie, <coughs> do you think that I should give it all up now? Now that I'm going to be married? Well, that depends on your fiancé. How does he feel about all well, this? I, I haven't discussed it with him yet. Oh, I do hope you'll understand. What I can't understand is why you're so attached to these poor infants. Is it a sense of duty? I have just told you. You told me you were lonely and you became attached to some homeless ways. Why? Well, because I love them. Because they need me. Very well, my dear. We'll let it go at that for the time being. And now I'll have that cup of tea, if you don't mind, while we wait for your fiancé. More tea, Joe. I'm Carrie. Uh, no, thanks, Jackie. New York has changed since I was here last. All those tall buildings, my goodness. Would you believe it? They're putting them up four and even five stories high. 
Aunt Carrie, this country is going to the dogs. May we come in? Oh, Delia and James, come in the boat. Good afternoon, Chatty. Joe, James and I have come to take Aunt Carrie home to dinner. Good afternoon, everybody. Ready, Aunt Carrie? Well, I'm glad you two finally found a reason for visiting my nursery. You know, Aunt Carrie, that they've never been here before. Well, that doesn't mean that we haven't been interested no, here. Oh, I'm afraid it does. Tut, tut, don't pick her children. Naturally, no one's interested in Chatty's waves except herself. Chatty, since I'm here, I've decided to look them over. Bring them out, my dear. Well, I'm afraid that they've all gone home, Aunt Carrie. All gone? What a pity. And so I take my candle Who's that? Who is that? That's Tina. Uh, she always has her supper here because, well, she's a little more delicate than the others. Go fetch her, Chatty. All right, Aunt Carrie. Will you come along with me, Joe? Oh, certainly, Chatty. It'd be delighted. Jim, my dear, we must be nice about this now. We simply must. Oh, be as nice as you please, Delia, but don't let the child come too close. Keep it at a distance. You, you never can tell what disease a child... Has come in. Oh, hi, it's Dr. Lansko. James and Delia and Mrs. Mingum. Well, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Doctor? Oh, I'm the official physician for Chatty's nursery. Oh, there you are, Chatty. And Joe, and look who's with them. Oh, what a pretty child. Well, this, this is Tina, everybody. And Tina, this is Aunt Carrie. Well, what do you say to her? I am very pleased to make your acquaintance. Thank you, my dear. What is your name? Tina Fott. Hmm? I said, what is your other name, child? Clementina. That's very pretty, but your other name... No, I'm afraid she doesn't understand. Oh. How old are you, Clementina? Five. But don't you know your parents' name, no. dear? No, she doesn't. Oh. oh. Do you know where you live, dear? Doesn't she know where she lives? Oh, yes, Mrs. Minga, she knows. She lives in a shanty way uptown. 22nd Street, I believe. With a Negro family. 22nd? You can't mean she isn't a hundred dollar baby? Well, is she? I don't understand. I mean, the baby who was left several years ago at the door of one of those disgraceful shanties out on Broadway near 22nd Street with a hundred dollar bill pinned to its bib. Oh, you must remember the sensation it made. Why, somebody even wrote to me in Paris. Just a moment, Aunt Carrie. Chatty? Yes, Delia? Is this the hundred dollar baby? Well, I... I'm afraid that we'll have to ask Dr. Lansko. He brought her to me. Is she, Doctor? Yes, of course she is. Oh, what an attractive child. Come here, Tina. Would you like to sit on Aunt Delia's lap? All right. Then come on up. <laughs> That's a good girl. <laughs> you know, Tina, I'd give anything in the world to have a little girl like you. Don't you have any children at all? No. Not even one? Not even one, dear. <laughs> dear, dear, if we're going to get home before dark. All right, James, in just a minute. I like you. <laughs> oh, I mean, the dark. Oh, I like the first time. <laughs> I've ever seen her put her arms around anybody, Delia. She must like you. Come along, Tina. Come along. Aunt Delia must go home. Why must she? Well, because we've invited Aunt Carrie to dinner, Go dear. on, say it, and we can't keep her waiting because she's <laughs> always hungry. <laughs> say goodbye to everybody, Tina. <laughs> goodbye, Auntie Delia. Yeah. Goodbye, dear. And I'll come and see you again. You're soon. coming, Aunt Carrie. Uh, how about you, Joe? Like to have dinner with us? Oh, no, thanks, Jim. I think I'll stay a while and talk to my fiance. That is, if she doesn't mind. Oh, no, Joe, dear. I don't mind. Why, there's something that I, I want to talk to you about, too. Darling, darling, hold me close and kiss me. Chatty? Oh. Oh, I've shocked you, haven't I, Joe? Uh, no, not at all. After all, Chatty, we're almost married. Yes, almost, but I, I should keep my kisses for my husband... Nice girls do. Oh, I understand you. You feel things more than other people, and you show what you feel. Too much, dear. Well, not with me, but sometimes when you're with those children you've practically adopted. Uh, Chatty, I want you all to myself. You see, I'm jealous. Oh, jealous of my little waves, my Joe. Oh, Chatty, uh, after we're married, you don't intend to come to the nursery every day, do you? Why, of course. It never occurred to me that I wouldn't. It never occurred? But why, Chatty? Why? Well, because these these children need me. Because it's my my duty. Duty? 
A married woman's first duty is to her husband, her home. Well, Joe, you don't mean that you're expecting me to desert That's them. That's exactly what I mean. Oh, no, no, Joe, I can't. I, I won't. They, they need me. I need you. But it's not the same thing, Joe. I'd be giving them only a little part of each day. Oh, Joe, don't be a Ralston, scared to death of anything that everybody else doesn't do. Well, I am a Ralston, and proud of it. Chatty, if we quarrel now, we might never make it up. Yes, I know that. I'm, I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking of everything. But, Joe, it's not fair of you to ask me to give up these children. Very well, it's not fair, but I ask it all the same. I'm going now, Chatty. I'll be waiting for you to send for me when you see things my way. Goodbye. Joe! Joe! Oh, my dear. Miss Chatty, it's dark outside. Can I sleep here with you tonight? Oh, no. No, my darling, I've, I've got to take you home now. Why are you crying? Well, because... Oh, Tina, come... Come here and sit on my lap. Let me hold you close, my darling. Oh, my baby. My own darling baby. Whatever will become of you. Why, Chatty, have you finished your dinner? Are you alone? Why, yes, dear, come in. Delia, Joe and I, we may not be married. But Chatty, are you crazy? What is the matter, dear? Have you and Joe quarreled? Have we? I don't know, I oh, don't know. sit in that chair beside the fire. There, now tell me. Delia, I want you to help me. Help you, but how? Those poor children. Joe wants me to give them up. Well, of course he does, Chatty, any man would. So that's what Joe came to see Jim about. Chatty, don't you expect to have babies of your own? Now, surely they're entitled to first claim on you. <laughs> that's just it. How can I give up my own baby? What? What did you say, dear? I said, how can I give up my own baby? Yours. <laughs> oh, which of those poor children do you call your own baby, my dear? Call my own baby my own baby. Your own your own. My own little girl. The one who lives in that shanty. The hundred dollar baby. She's my own. Chatty. My poor, poor Chatty. Oh, darling, tell me everything. Oh, what, what do you want me to tell you? That, that's all you need to know. Oh, no, wait. I'm afraid to talk here. Jim and Joe might walk in. Come upstairs to my room. No, 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 please. I, I don't want to talk. You about. must come along now. That's right. You oh. must. Tell me everything. Everything. All I want to do is to help you. You are listening to The Old Maid by Zoe Akins, adapted for radio by Arthur Arendt, produced by the Theatre Guild on the air, and presented by the United States Steel Corporation. And here speaking for United States Steel is George Hicks. Good evening. With only eight more shopping days left until Christmas, I'd like to offer you a couple of suggestions that may save you much needless confusion, expense, and disappointment with your late Christmas buying. The first suggestion comes from a friend of mine who has an important job in a big New York department store. He says, take time at home to make a careful list of exactly what you want to buy and where you want to buy it. Then get to the stores as early next week as you can and before noon, if possible. That way you'll be far more apt to get what you want. You'll get better service. And you'll finish your shopping in far better condition physically, mentally, and financially. Now, my second suggestion has to do with any late Christmas purchases you may make of things made of steel, like stainless steel watches, cutlery, kitchenware, and costume jewelry, 
as well as radios, refrigerators, washing machines, bicycles, toys, and literally hundreds of other items in which steel is either the most important material or one of the most important. Whether the steel be plainly visible, hidden by a coat of glistening enamel, buried in the springs of upholstered furniture, or covered by a casing of wood or plastic, you want to be sure of its quality. That's why it will pay you to look for the USS label on the finished product. For when you see that symbol, you know the steel is good. You know that the manufacturer has used quality steel backed by the combined production and research facilities of the United States Steel Corporation. And manufacturers who use this trademark steel are saying, in effect, to you, the retail buyer, we have used the best steel we could buy for the purpose. And this symbol is proof of the care we take to ensure the quality of our goods. So if you still have Christmas shopping to do, remember, make a careful list, shop as early in the week as you can, and before noon if possible. And if you're buying anything made of steel, look for that famous trademark featuring the letters U.S.S. enclosed in a circle. It is your assurance of quality steel. We pause now for station identification. You are listening to KECA Los Angeles. You are listening to the Theater Guild on the Air, presented by the industrial family that serves the nation, United States Steel. And now the curtain rises on the second act of The Old Maid by Zoe Akins, starring Judith Anderson as Delia and Helen Menken as Chatty, featuring Estelle Winwood as Aunt Carrie, Patricia Kirkland as Tina, aged 19, and Taylor Holmes as Dr. Lansko. <laughs> few minutes later. Chatty has just told Delia that little Tina is really her own child. They've gone to an upstairs bedroom to talk things over. Sit down, dear. Just one moment and I'll turn up the wig. No, I'd... I'd rather be like this. In the dark. Chatty, was it when you were in the South? After you were ill that... Was that why you went South? Of course. That's why Dr. Lanskill sent you. You loved someone. Yes, but... That's all over. But it wasn't Joe Ralston you loved. No, not then. But now? Now. Oh, yes, now. That's why I want to marry him. Because I love him. Not because he's a Ralston dealer. Not even because I thought I'd have money for my baby so that she'd never have to be sent to an institution. I can't give up my baby, can I? Now, we're just sitting here alone in the dark. Now, you can tell me everything. No, I really don't want to tell you everything, Dina. All I want you to do is help me. Have you thought of telling Joe yourself? No, I couldn't. He'd, he'd never forgive me. He must never know. No, of course not. Chatty, dear, we're talking as if you didn't have to consider the person who, who took advantage of you. After all, he's your child's father. No, no one took advantage of me. We were both lonely and unhappy. Besides, he, he never thought of marrying me. I knew that even before he went away. Uh, he went away? Yes. Knowing? No. No, I didn't know myself then. Oh, but afterwards. What about afterwards? No, he never knew. He never came back. But, darling, shouldn't he have known after all? Why? He couldn't have helped me. He was in no position to marry anyone. Besides, he... He didn't love me. He loved someone else. Where did he go? What... Does it all matter? You you wouldn't understand. You won't tell me who it was. No, I've never told anybody. How can I help you if you don't trust me? But I've told you all that you need to know. Where did he go, Chatty? Out of the country to... to Italy? Oh! Then it was to Italy. It was Clem Spender. I told you he loved somebody else. It was because you hadn't waited for Stop him. It. I knew it. I knew you wouldn't forgive that. Oh, but you've got to listen to me now. I've been in love with Clem ever since I was a girl. But he never looked at anybody but you until that time at your wedding when you asked me to look after him. And after that, he began coming to me for, for sympathy. 
And I, I was so sorry for him. I, I loved him so much. Oh, Chatty, how could you? How could you? When he didn't even pretend to I love you. I shouldn't have told you. I knew you wouldn't understand. Hadn't you any pride at all? You needn't be so contemptuous. I, I've never been sorry enough. Not really sorry. And he's never known about the child? No. Why should he? It's nobody's business but mine. Besides, that's over. It's all over. There's nothing left of anything I ever felt for him. Except my baby. Why did you come to me? What did you expect me to do? I want you to persuade Joe, he is your brother-in-law, that I should be permitted to go to my nursery every day so that I can see my baby and, and watch over her. And if he won't do that, then maybe you can help me to get out of this marriage as decently as possible with, without hurting him. Don't you think it's hurting Joe to marry him with such a secret on your conscience? Suppose he finds out. Oh, I've got to risk that. Oh, Delia, I'll make it up to him in other ways for deceiving him. He'll not be sorry he married me, Delia. I don't know what to say. I can't think. You must give me time. Oh, there is no time. I must decide now, tonight. Well, whatever happens, that child mustn't live where it does now. And she shan't, I promise you that. Oh, you promise that? You do promise that? Yes. But I must manage it in my own way. I'm going down to talk to Joe and Jim now. Will you wait here, or shall I send for a coach to take you home? No, no, I'll wait. I, I couldn't go home without knowing. I, I couldn't. Dear, we've been looking for you. What? Oh, darling, you look pale. You sit down, dear. Uh, Delia, Joe has something on his mind that I've advised him to consult you about. I think I know what it is. Chatty's been here. Then she's told you? What shall I do, Delia? Chatty is very interested in those children, Joe. Surely you must have noticed how fond she is of that little girl, Tina, that we saw today. Yes, I understand that, but... Why shouldn't she go on being interested in them, fond of them even, without seeing them every day? And there's another reason I'm against it. Her health. Her health? Oh. Delia Chatty's father died of the lung fever. Chatty had that same condition. She cannot go on taking unnecessary risks by exposing herself to those youngsters. Joe, if Chatty chooses these miserable children instead of you... I don't see what you can do, but... Well, if she chooses them, it's because she thinks she's doing what's right. And in that case, I guess I'll have to be the one to give in. You mean you've really decided that Chatty is to do exactly what she likes in exactly this Exactly as she likes. I love her enough to put up with... Oh, where is she? I'm going to tell her now. No, it's no use. What? It's no use, I tell you. Chatty can't marry you. She can't marry anyone now. I... I don't understand you, Delia. Chatty's ill again. She coughed blood in this room a minute ago. What? Do you know what that means? She can't marry anyone, I tell you. Why? Why wasn't I told at once? Well, because such things aren't easy to tell. Joe Delia's right. If poor Chatty's ill again, marriage isn't to be thought of. But I... I can't give her up. I, I can't. Where is she? I must see her. No, you must let me see her first. I've got to tell her I've told you. Oh, this is hard for her, too, you know. Go home now, Joe. And since you've asked for my advice, here it is. Put all thoughts of marrying Chatty out of your mind for good. Dear, uh... I just met Joe as I was coming in. He told me. Why did you do it, Delia? Dr. Lanskill, Chatty didn't go south because of her illness, but I know why she went. Oh. That's why she mustn't marry Joe. Who decided that? Did she? No, I did. With or without her consent? Without? You've taken a great deal upon yourself, Delia. You think I've done wrong? I think it's a sacrilegious thing to lay so much as a finger on another person's destiny. But she came to me herself, begged me to help her, so she wouldn't have to give up her child. This was the only way. I wouldn't help her to deceive Joe. I wouldn't connive at a lie like that. 
Not to my husband's brother. Well? But I feel that I can make it up to her by caring for her child. You know, Doctor, I have no children. So I'm going to take the little girl myself. Chatty's little girl. Chatty's and Clem Spender's. You see, I know everything. If you're counting on me to back you up in this lie, I'll make one condition. And what is it? That you're not to take Chatty's child from her. But it's the only way. And after all, if she's willing to let her live in that Most shanty... Most of you have forgotten that the Negro woman who found the child on her doorstep was Chatty's own nurse when she was a little girl. No doubt you mean well, Delia, but each of us has the right to love and suffer, to lie or to tell the truth after his own fashion. And now that Chatty has put herself at your mercy, be generous to her. Don't judge her. And above all, don't try to take from her the one thing that is really her own. Good night, Delia. Chatty? Yes, Delia. Come in. And oh, tell me quickly. Chatty, you can't marry Joe, can you? And keep little Tina. No, not keep her with me, no. But are you telling me that I must give her up? No. Only that you must not marry Joe. What? I promised to help you, didn't I? Well, I've done the best I could. You and Tina shall be together always. Yes, but Joe, you didn't tell him. I couldn't bear that. What did you tell him? That you were coughing blood again. Oh, Delia, how could you? I had to tell him something. If you're to keep your child, Chatty, the engagement has to be broken. So you frightened him away. I see. He's dreadfully unhappy, of course, but he accepts your decision. My decision? Well, mine, then. Yes, but if I don't accept your decision, if I tell him the truth, and he should forgive me everything. If there'd been any hope of that, would you have come to me? <gasps> Chatty, what you want most is to have your little girl with you. To take care of her yourself, oh, isn't it? Yes, but I... Well, then, you can both be together always. Here in my house, with me. That's the only solution I can think of. I can do no more. And if you're not satisfied, I must wash my hands of both of you. You said together always. Tina and I. Yes, I said you should have Tina with you always. Here in this house. Here in this house. With you. With me. Oh. Don't cry, oh. Chatty. Oh. Don't don't cry. You are listening to The Old Maid by Zoe Akins from the novel by Edith Wharton, produced by the Theatre Guild on the Air and presented by the United States Steel Corporation. And here again, speaking for United States Steel, is George Hicks. Tonight, open hearth furnaces are again glowing steadily all over America. The steel mills are once more hard at work making the metal that our country needs in enormous quantities. And that hard work is accomplishing a great deal. During the past year, in the months when labor difficulties did not interfere with production, the steel industry set new peacetime records in producing that metal. This means a great deal to you, because steel helps to make almost everything you use and helps you in almost everything you do. Record-breaking steel production means that before many months have passed, you will again be getting the things you want and need. Right now, there's still not enough steel for everyone. Wartime conditions caused an overwhelming demand. But the production records of the American steel industry mean that the demand will be satisfied, and every steel man hopes that will be done before long. Naturally, the United States steel family is working hard to supply its share. It's doing its best to speed the day when there will be no more shortages of steel and steel products. United States steel is glad to be working hard because every member of the U.S. steel family, worker, and stockholder 
knows that he's a part of the basic industry on which all American industries are built. They know that jobs for millions, as well as homes and conveniences and comforts for all, are dependent on an ample supply of good steel. So they're working to produce that steel, steel they're proud to have the manufacturer identify with the USS label when used in his product. Producing great quantities of quality steel to make the things we all use is the major job of the industrial family that serves the nation, United States Steel. You are listening to the Theater Guild on the Air, presented by the United States Steel Corporation. And now the curtain rises on the third act of The Old Maid, starring Judith Anderson as Delia and Helen Menken as Chatty. It's 14 years later. New York City has moved northward now. Even 34th Street is no longer considered a suburb. The house on Gramercy Park has changed, too. The decor is early Victorian now, and Chatty did you, but she's not too happy about it, as you can hear her tell, tell Dr. Lanskill. And, Doctor, Delia has done her best to spoil Tina from the day she brought us here to live. And after Delia's husband died 12 years ago, there's been nothing, nothing at all that Tina doesn't have or can't have just by asking for it. There's uh, something I've noticed. Tina calls Delia mother. Why? <laughs> Because she's never had a mother, and she's very fond of Delia. Have you never told her that you're her mother? No. Am I interrupting anything? Uh, no, Delia. Is Tina dressed? Yes, she's in the drawing room with Lanning Halsey. He's taking her to the ball tonight. Well, I... Um... Must you go, Doctor? I must look in on one of my patients. Goodbye, Delia. Goodbye. Ah, Tina, come in. You look ravishing tonight. How old are you, my dear? Nineteen, Doctor. <laughs> Quite the young lady. Well, good night, all. Good night. You do look lovely, Tina, darling. You'll be the belle of the ball. Will I? Mama, Lanning Halsey said I have violet eyes. Are they violet, Mama? <laughs> I would call them deep blue, dear. What difference does it make what color your eyes are, Tina? There are more important things Mother, than... please tell Cousin Shaddy to stop finding fault with me. Well, somebody must find fault sometimes. Oh, you see... Cousin Chatty, you think Mama spoils me, but she doesn't. It's just that she understands me while you don't. Excuse me. Where are you going, Chatty? Oh, uh, to make up tomorrow's list for the greengrocer. Uh, have a nice time, Tina. Tina, I don't want you ever to speak to Cousin Chatty like that again. Do you hear me? Yes, Mama. Now run along to the ball with Lanning. And mind you, don't come in too late. Mama, I have my key, so... So please make Cousin Chatty go to bed. She's always waiting up if I'm the least bit late. I'll tell her. Run along now, dear. Tell me first. Do I look nice, Mama? <laughs> Lovely, darling. Oh, Mama, I love you very much. Chatty, I scolded Tina because of the way she spoke to you. I tried to make her realize it was disrespectful. She thinks I can't understand her. She considers me an old maid. A ridiculous, narrow-minded old maid. Chatty, my dear. Oh, you needn't pity me. <laughs> She's really mine. I do scold her. But I don't want to be hard on her. <laughs> you know, I, I have a technique all worked out. What kind of technique? Oh, I, I practice what I'm going to say to her. I repeat it to myself in advance over and over so that I'll sound like an old maid cousin talking. <laughs> Not a mother. Poor Chatty. Do you think Flanning Halsey will ask Tina to marry him, dear? Unfortunately, my daughter has no fortune and no name. And every careful mother we know has warned her sons against becoming interested. Chatty, Tina's happy with us here. She doesn't need to marry anyone. My child and old maid, like me, never. My child shall have her life. But she's not yet 20. Wait. I'm afraid. What if she doesn't wait? Chatty, 
Do you know what you're insinuating? Yes, I know. But I it's know. outrageous. No girl who was decent would ever... Surely you trust your own child. My mother trusted me. Are you going to sit up for Tina? Yes. Why? She has a key. I just told you why. Good night, Chatty. Good night, Tina. What, Tina? What's that you said, my darling? Oh, no. No, that's wrong. It must be less like a mother and more like an old maid. I must get it right. What's that you said, Tina? You walked home with Lanning. Do you know how late it is? I sat up because I couldn't for the life of me remember if you had taken your latchkey. Tina, how many times must you have to be told? Oh, I guess that's better. That's more like an old maid. Good night, Lanny, and, and thank you for a lovely time. Must I go? No one's about. Let's, let's just sit here in the foyer. All right, but just a minute. This is very wicked of us, Lanny. Is it? Why? You're going away to Europe? Darling, when I come back, things will be different. What, what sort of things, Lanny? With us, darling. You... What's the matter? I, I thought I heard somebody in the drawing room. Who'll be up at this hour? Did you really have a good time tonight, Tina? Oh, I loved it. The snow and the moonlight and the icy trees in the square. And being with you at last. All alone. Oh, Tina, darling. Oh, my dearest. Oh. Darling, that, that was my first kiss. And I shall never kiss anyone but you. Ever. What's that? There is someone in the drawing room. Cousin Chatty, it must be. Oh, oh. Oh, Delia. Delia, come down at once. Tina's downstairs with... What? Why, Chatty? Delia, put on your dressing gown. Hurry up, hurry Why? up. Why? What's the matter, dear? It's Tina. She's downstairs with Lanning. And they were kissing. Oh, oh I'll hurry be up. right down. Hurry up, I tell you. Tina, is that Lanning Halsey with you? Uh, yes, it is, Mrs. Ralston. I've just brought Tina home. I, I was just leaving. Good night, Lanning. Mrs. Ralston, I'd just like to say that it's ever so nice of you not to scold me for being here. Oh, good evening, Miss Chatty. Good evening, Mr. Halsey. Yes, Tina. Yes, Delia. Don't you scold him. This is Tina's fault, not his. Any boy would do the same if she permitted it. Permitted what? Just a moment, Tina. I want it distinctly understood that this is not Tina's fault. No. Well, no matter who's to blame this time, it's not to happen again. I hope you both understand that. What? Miss Chatty... Delia, will you kindly tell Mr. Halsey not to come here again? Mama, tell Cousin Chatty to take that back. Tell Annie he's to come when he wants to. Tell him, Mama, it's your house, not hers. Don't bother, Mrs. Ralston. I'm sailing next week, and I'd only have come to say goodbye in any case. Goodbye? Yes. That's the only thing I can say in the circumstances. Good night. And goodbye, Tina. Lanny, don't go. Don't go. Cousin Chatty, do you know that I love Lanning Halsey, and you've driven him away? Oh, no, my child. I've not driven him away. If he's not coming here again, it's because he found it awkward... And he has no intention of marrying a girl who's so free with her kisses. That's not true. That's not true. Tina, you don't think for a minute that anything I could say would drive him away if he really cared for you, do you? Cousin Chatty is right, Tina. If Lanning goes, it's because he doesn't care as much for you as you think. But he would have cared. I'd have made him care. Now I can't. Now he's gone, and I'll never forgive her, never. Tina. Cousin Chatty, you have no business to meddle. Whatever I do is no concern of you. Tina. And if you ever do it again, I'll never speak to you as long as I live. Go to your room, Tina. I'm going, Mama. 
But before I do, she's got to know that I'm sick of her fault-finding and her spying and her meddling. You can say what you please me, because you understand me and I love you. She's only a sour old maid who hates me because I'm young and attractive and alive. Or, or she's old and hideous and dried up and has never known anything about love. I won't have her interfering with my life, I tell you. I won't have it. Come. What is it, Chatty? Delia, I've been thinking about what happened tonight. Tina and I must leave this house. Leave this house? You'd take Tina away from me oh, now. I'm not ungrateful for what you've done. Oh, don't let's speak of gratitude. What does it matter whether you're grateful or not? It's Tina I'm thinking of. Of course it's Tina you're thinking of. Tina. And Tina's father, Clem Spender. You're insane, Chatty. I haven't thought of Clem Spender for years. Oh, you have, you have. You've thought of him and thinking of Tina. Everything you've done for me was for him. A woman never stops thinking of the man she loves. There are so many things to remind her. A sunset, an old song, that turquoise pendant that you're still wearing. I know. I thought of him too, tonight, when I saw Tina and Lanning downstairs. I suppose you found her in his arms. I was afraid to come in. That's why I called you. I was afraid to see Clem and me in each other's arms. Hush, you mustn't say these things. You mustn't think them. You can't forgive me because Clem Spender came to me after you jilted him. That's why you like keeping me at your mercy and taking his child from me. His child, who calls you mother. And suppose that's all true. Suppose I couldn't leave Clem Spender's child to the mercy of chance. She's yours, too. And to take her away now from the life you've made, such a sacrifice to give her would be too cruel to her. Even more cruel to her than to me. My mind's made up, Delia. I know what's best for my own child. I thank you for doing all that you could for her, but my I mind... I haven't done all I could. But I'm going to now, if you'll let me. Chatty, I'd like to adopt Tina legally. Oh, adopt Tina. Why, what difference would that make? Can't you see what a difference it would make if I give her my name? The Ralston name and my money. I tell you, Lanning won't ever marry her. He doesn't love her. Oh, she can make him love her. And if she has money of her own and my name, the Halseys won't find her such a bad match for their son. Give her this chance, Chatty. What mother wouldn't? And if Lanning takes her away from us both, in time it won't be like really giving her up. Couldn't we just go on loving her together? Mama? Yes, Tina, my darling, what is it? I didn't call you. I called Mama. Oh. Answer her. Yes, dear? I, I can't sleep, Mama. Won't you come up and sit by my bed? Go on up to her, Delia. <laughs> following June. The house on Gramercy Park is again in a festive mood for tomorrow in the flower bank drawing room downstairs. Tina, now Clementina Ralston, becomes Mrs. Lanning Halsey. It's awfully good of you, Aunt Carrie, to come back for Tina's wedding. I know. I'm not as young as I used to be. Thank goodness the next one won't be for at least 20 years. I hope <laughs> to be dead by then. <laughs> well, Chatty. Have you decided to sit down for a minute? You must be tired, dear. Please sit down. No, no, no. I'm, I'm all right. I guess everything's done that can be done tonight. Let me see. Our 200 plates of ice cream about enough and... Oh, my goodness. I forgot all about the doilies. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'll, I'll be right back. Do you know what? I do believe poor Chatty is really happy. You'd think it was her own daughter getting married. Well, good night, my dear. There you are, Mama. I've been looking for you. Oh, good evening, Aunt Carrie. And your great aunt, my dear, please. Show me the proper respect. And now I really must get to bed. Good night. Did you want to tell me something, darling? Only that I'm going up to bed. And, and will you come up and say good night to me? Please? Of course. Promise? I promise. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Oh, nonsense, darling. Oh, I know, Mama. I know what I owe you. More than up. Well, now the doilies, we're upstairs. Oh, come in, Cousin Chatty. I, I was just telling dearest Mama how much I owe her. 
that I'll never be able to repay. Oh. oh, go on. I don't want to interrupt anything. Go on, I say. Well, it's... It's just that... I used to wonder who I really was. But I don't care now. Well, my dear, I'd rather have you for my mother than anyone in the world. Oh, thank you, dear. But you mustn't forget your cousin, Chatty. She's been just as interested in you as I have. And she loves you just as much as I do. Go to bed now, dear. You won't forget your promise. I won't forget. Then, good night. What promise? What promise? I Did promised, you make, Delia. I promised her before she goes to sleep that I would... Yes, that you would. Well, you agree, don't you, that a word ought to be said to the child before her marriage as to her new duties and responsibilities? Oh, of course. I understand. But please understand me too, Delia. If I ask you not to. Chatty, you surely feel that on the night before her wedding, a girl ought to have her mother's counsel. Well, naturally. That's why I must be the one to talk to Tina tonight. Just tonight. I'm her mother. Chatty, you're not going to tell her that. Not now. Oh, do you hate me for it as much hate as all that? Hate you? What a word to hate use between us. A word that's been between us since the beginning. You've hated me ever since you knew that I was the mother of Clem Spender's child. Because his child is mine instead of yours. Chatty, you believe I hated you only because you yourself have hated me. Hated me in spite of everything I've tried to do for you. It's wicked of you, Chatty, wicked. That's not true. I'm not wicked. I would never have done to you what you've done to me. What? I've done... Yes. From the beginning, you deliberately divided me from my daughter. Do you suppose it's been easy all these years to hear her call you mother? Oh, I know it was agreed between us that she must never guess the truth. But you needn't have perpetually come between us if you hadn't. She'd have had no one to turn to but me. She'd have had to love me. And that's why tonight, just tonight, she belongs to me. I won't let her call you mother tonight. And I'm going upstairs to her room right now. Delia. Delia. Are you asleep? No. You can come in, Chatty. I've been lying awake thinking all the old thoughts. Clem and you and me. Yes. Well, Tina's not asleep yet either. There's a light under her door. What did she say when you told her? I didn't go in. What? No. She's still waiting for you. But I couldn't, after all. Tell her, I mean. If she's never really belonged to me, perhaps it's because her father never really belonged to me either. Both were yours. But you might have gone in and said goodnight to her, dear. Yes, I, I thought of that. But it's no use. You're the mother she wants, Delia. Go to her. It's not your fault, nor mine. Come with me, Chatty. No, no. It would be better. Mama! Should... Good night, Delia. I... I suddenly am... am very sleepy. <laughs> Mama was... Cousin Chatty crying just now? She looks so strange. Tina, dear, do you want to do something that will make me very happy? Anything. Then go after your cousin Chatty. And when you found her, remember this. She didn't marry a man who loved her very much and who would have given her everything she wanted. Because she wouldn't give you up. That's why she's an old maid. Oh. Why didn't anyone ever tell me that before? Go after her now. And for tonight, try and make her glad for a choice she made a long time ago. I've always been so horrid to her. There's one thing more. Yes? When you go away tomorrow, the very last moment, 
You understand? After you've said goodbye to me. And to everybody else. Just as Lanning helps you into the carriage. Yes. Lean down and give your last kiss to Cousin Chatty. Don't forget. The very last. I won't forget. Oh, there she is now in the garden. I, I can see her in the moonlight. Go to her, Tina. Now, darling. Yes. Oh, yes. C Cousin Chatty! Cousin Chatty! <laughs> Fallen on the Theatre Guild on the air production of The Old Maid by Zoe Akins from the novel by Edith Wharton, sponsored by the United States Steel Corporation. Judith Anderson was starred as Delia and Helen Menken as Chatty. And Carrie was played by Estelle Winwood, Tina, age 19, by Patricia Kirkland, Dr. Lanskill by Taylor Holmes, Joe Ralston by Wesley Addy, Lanning Halsley by Jack Manning, Jim Ralston by Chet Stratton. Tina, aged five, was played by Jimsy Summers and Clem Spender by Lamont Johnson. And now, here is Roger Pryor with a word about next week's play. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, the Theatre Guild brings you a rollicking regional comedy, Papa is All. Set in the colorful Pennsylvania Dutch community of Lancaster County, starring Oscar Homolka and Aline McMahon and featuring Peggy Conklin and Elliot Reed. Be sure to be with us next week when we discover what happens to Papa when Papa is All. Remember, next week, Papa is All, starring Oscar Homolka and Aileen McMahon. And remember, too, that the trademark of United States Steel, USS, on any steel product is your guide to quality steel. The Theatre Guild on the Air is under the supervision of Teresa Halburn and Lawrence Langner, with Homer Fickett, Director, Carol Irwin, Production Executive, and our Minor Marshal Executive Director of the Radio Department. Music was composed and conducted by Harold Levy, and the play was adapted by Arthur Aaron. Here's how you can lend a hand in the fight against tuberculosis. Buy Christmas seals. And if you have received a letter on behalf of this year's sale of Christmas seals, please answer it. Do it today, won't you? Your announcer, Norman Brokenshire. The United States Steel Corporation hopes that you'll be with us next Sunday at this same time. This is AC, the American Broadcasting Company.